what's up guys welcome to my channel if you are new yet my name is divine i'm a musical five minominak drummer and a keyboardist i have been for many many years i started making these videos as a space for music lovers like myself to check out our favorite artists and break down some of our findings that make them so so fantastic make sure you follow us on instagram at the perseverance reaction in order to recommend the favorite singers for us to react to What's up, YouTube? Hope you guys are feeling good. good. Hey guys, we're back doing some new videos, guys. I'm gonna see my beautiful girl. Some makeover. My name is Devin, and welcome Best to the Best Friends, guys. So we're going to be reacting to scientific facts that's the Quran. Scientific facts in the Quran, guys. This is gonna be part two. We actually reacted to part one previously, so this is gonna be part two. So you give this a try and see what's more scientific facts that are in the Quran that we never Don't knew know. about <laughs> thousands of years ago. So you know how to do it, guys? Let's talk about right and react more. Yeah. Let's get into this video. Position that it will end up in the center of the galaxy. The idea of the alternation of the night and the day and of the spherical nature of the earth is actually implied in the 31st surah and the 29th ayah of the Quran. Have you not seen how Allah merges the night into the day and the day into the night? And in another verse, the 39th chapter in the fifth ayah or the fifth verse, the Quran mentioned, He coils the night upon the day and He coils the day upon the night. And this word that is used in the Quran in the original Arabic is kawarra. Kawarra, in its original meaning, means the action of coiling a turban around your head. Coiling a turban. So it describes Kawarra, how the night and the day coils one round the other. And you can find that description of the interpenetration of one sector by another is expressed in the Quran just as if the concept of the earth's roundness had already been conceived at the time. There were a few philosophers who had theorized that the earth was round, but it was not really a generally accepted idea. But it is something that is implied in the Quran, and certainly we can gather this today from our present day knowledge. It's a very another interesting aspect that in one place in the Quran, the word that is used to describe the shape of the earth is the same word that is used to describe the egg of the ostrich. Now, looking at this globe, for example, you may imagine that the earth is completely spherical. But in reality, that is not the case. The earth is slightly misshaped. It is not a perfect sphere. And in fact, slightly elongated, rather like an ostrich egg. So it is incredible also that the Quran is describing that shape of the earth. At least this is a possible interpretation of those verses. Certainly we can say that like none similar. of these things Sorry. actually contradict present Correct. modern scientific knowledge. In the 10th surah, in the 5th ayah, it is He, meaning God, Allah, who made the sun a shining lamp and the moon as a light and measured out their stages. Now the Quran describes the sun as siraj. Now the word siraj means torch, means it's something that generates its own heat and light. Whereas the, the moon is described as a nur. Now, a nur means a light that is originating from another source. And of course, this is the correct understanding. The moon reflects the light of the sun. It's common knowledge today, but not necessarily so in the time of the Prophet Muhammad. Let's see what one of the respected cosmologists and scientists in the field of astronomy had to say when he was shown some of the statements in the Qur'an concerning his field of expertise. Professor Yushidi Kusan, who's the director of the Tokyo Observatory in Tokyo in Japan, and this is what he said, I say, 
I am very much impressed by finding true astronomical facts in the Quran. And for us modern astronomers who have been studying a very small piece of the universe, we have concentrated our efforts for understanding that very small part. Because by using telescopes, we can only see a very few parts of the sky without thinking about the whole universe. So by reading the Quran and by answering to questions, I think I can find my future way for investigating the universe. What he's saying is that the one who is writing the Quran, the one who is revealing the Quran, the one who is speaking the words of the Quran, is talking as if he is looking at the whole universe together, as opposed to the scientist who concentrates on observing this bit or that bit of the universe, which is what most astronomers do. Who is it that sees the whole universe altogether? Who is it who sees all things in all places in all times, except Allah, the mighty, the wise? So these are some of the amazing scientific facts and we're going to move on also to another area that particularly interested me because when I was at school, one of the subjects that I studied was geography and a sub-subject of that was of course geology. And I do remember when I first read the Quran 20 years ago and it was reading the Quran that motivated me to embrace Islam. One of the things that stuck in my head and I remember it until today was coming across the descriptions in the Quran of mountains. For example, in the 78th surah in verses 6 to 7, Allah says, Have we not made the earth an expanse and the mountains stakes? The word that is used here is otad. Otad meaning stake is like the, the peg of the tent. So the peg of the tent goes into the ground. It holds the rope that holds the tent. So you have a small part of the peg sticking up from the ground, but the majority of the peg is inside the ground. The Quran also says in the 31st surah, in the 10th verse, and Allah has cast into the mountains, standing firm, so that it does not shake with you. Now today, with modern sonar technology, they have been able to bounce sound waves down through the Earth's crust. And according to the different rates at which the sound waves are reflected back and are measured, they can tell the different density of the Earth's crust as opposed to what is hard and what is soft, what is from the crust and what is from the magna. And what they have discovered with this technology is exactly what the Qur'an was saying 1,400 years ago. That the mountains have roots. The mountains, like the peg of the tent, not only do they go, go above the earth's surface, the mountains go deeply into the earth core. And they act, it has been theorized, as stabilizers. They help to stabilize the earth's surface. And there's two ways in which they do that. Number one, because the earth is composed of tectonic plates. The crust of the earth is actually made of different plates. And it is the movement of these plates that causes earthquakes. When these plates move against each other, the friction of that movement causes earthquakes. And that's also what they think how continental drift has happened. Originally, they believe all the continents were one continent. And then because of plate tectonics, it moved. But the Qur'an is saying is the mountains act as stabilizers. They help to stabilize the earth's crust. And this is something that has actually been theorized by modern geologists. There's another way in which the mountains may act as a stabilizing factor. And that is to do with the rotation. Maybe if you try and spin something, you will find that if it is not really spherical, it will, not, it will start to ro rotate and then it will start to wobble out of shape. And it is possible that the mountains actually act as a counterbalance to keep the Earth's rotation smooth. I do stress, of course, that these are theories, but it is very interesting what the Qur'an is saying 
1,400 years ago. That's very long time. And that it time. seems to be preempting the ideas and the knowledge that is being produced by modern day science. Certainly, it is a fact that is established that the mountains have roots. And the Quran is saying that the mountains are like or turn the pegs of a tent. So this is a remarkable scientific fact. It's also the Quran mentions some aspects of animal and plant life. For example, the 16th chapter of the Quran is called Surah Al-Nahl, which means the Surah of the Bee. And one of the aspects of the Quran in this Surah, it is talking about the bee. And it's very interesting that the word that is used in the Quran for the bee that flies around gathering honey or gathering the nectar for the honey, it is used in the female form. The gender that it is used is feminine. Although until recently it was believed that the bees were actually soldiers, they were males, and the ruler of the hive was a king. But as it happens, in fact, we know that the bees are indeed female and they are owned or they are headed by a queen. That's why we say the queen bee. It's also true that the Quran mentions that plants have different genders and the winds are a means of fertilization for the plants. So in the 15th chapter of the Quran, in the 22nd verse, it says that we, meaning Allah the Creator, this is the we of nobility. It does not mean there is more than one God, of course. We sent forth the winds that fesontate, that means that the fertilized things. These are all recently discovered things. Also, we find the Greek philosopher Democritus, who lived from 460 to 361 BC. He advanced the theory that matter was composed of tiny indivisible particles called atoms. And they believed that this was the base upon which all of things were made. And there was nothing smaller than the atom. However, modern science has discovered that atom is in fact divisible and the atom has been split and the atom itself is composed of smaller elements. The Quran says 1,400 years ago in the 34th chapter and the third ayah or the third verse, he is aware of an atom's weight in the heavens and on the earth and even anything smaller than that. Meaning there this is, is something miracle. smaller than it's atom really amazing, and Allah, God, is aware of it. Every single thing. There's another thing I want to mention. God mentions in the Quran some amazing things about the human beings. And one of the things is about our nerves. Here is a very frightening and terrifying passage of the Quran. It's mentioned in the 75th chapter in Ayahs 3 to 4. Does mankind think that we cannot assemble his bones? Nay, we are able to put together in perfect order the very tips of his fingers. God is telling us he can recreate us on this day, this terrifying day, this frightening day, the day of judgment. He is able to recreate you, even if you are dust, even you are bones to the very tip of your finger. Why the very tip of your finger? Of course, you've all heard of fingerprinting, haven't you? Every single human being's fingerprint is unique. unique yeah. Why did God mention the fingerprint? Why did God mention the tip of the finger? This is the uniqueness of the human being. God is telling us, look, I can recreate you even to this fingertip. That is the power that I have. Even to your most unique attribute, I can create you to that. Be mindful, be careful. I will create you again on the day of judgment and I will judge you and ask you about every single thing that you have done. This is not common knowledge. How did anyone 1,400 years ago know about fingerprinting? My dear listeners, our invitation is to invite you to His mercy, to His guidance and His forgiveness by accepting these truths, the proof that Islam is the truth. Beautiful, beautiful video, guys. It feels like an amazing presentation for me. Yeah. Very, very beautiful. Um, I love him taking this time to find out facts. It isn't easy and absolutely in the entire video itself is true. The fingerprints, the, the bees, 
the universe, everything, guys. The mountain is totally true, guys. I truly accept it. I truly believe it. I'm 100% certain that this, there are more facts to be discovered. Like, there are three more facts to be discovered. There was been written in the Bible, also in the Quran, too. And especially the fingerprint aspect, I know we all are unique in our own way. And God able telling us that like, He can create similar. It's amazing. According to what the Bible says, where God says there is nothing too hard for Him to do. There is nothing, nothing. entirely, nothing too hard for Him to do. So the fingerprint itself is just like the stop of His yeah. finger is done. So God is the ultimate, Allah. This is the ultimate. Uh, we got to respect that. <sighs> Feels like it's kind of like similar to what we've been told. Yeah, that's right. Uh, but there were some facts here that really shocked me. Like, some facts here. I was like, wow, is this really possible? Is this, how is this? How come I've not heard about it? It's really amazing watching this video. And I'm really glad I was able to check this out and complete the video entirely. What do you think? I enjoyed it. Like... What amazed me more is the fact that this happened 14,000 years ago. 1,500 like, years ago. How were you able to figure this out? It's a miracle because scientists, I don't think, were even there at that time. Like, things that are happening now is recent. All these things is just starting right now. So, how were they able to figure this out? Other than a miracle, guys. This is so beautiful. I love the fact that he explained everything in detail. When I was looking at the universe, I'm just looking at the earth and the fact that it turned. Like, it's sure. so mind-blowing. We space day and night. It turns. Like, how? How did God took his time to create something that beautiful for us? To make us experience different days. Wow, guys, this is so unique. And when you talk about the bee, both the mountains and everything, I I feel very impressed right now. I feel happy and I feel that this was a beautiful video because we need to sit in like this every day to keep our faith stronger, to make us know that definitely there's someone above, there's a mighty power above that's making everything possible. There's someone watching over us and making sure that we live truthfully. He's there. We just need to believe in him. We just need to open our heart and he will feel us. That's just the truth. That's true, guys. The creator knows everything. Everything. He knows what he puts here, how this thing is, yeah. how the earth rotates, how no matter how scientists try to discover black, it's not supposed to be a central contradict against the Quran. It's not possible. The creator knows what he did. He knows like this phone is like this. I'm you can't tell him. <laughs> This phone is not like this because he was one who made it like this. Well, it's like asking the person that made this phone that this stuff is not is not you that did it. Yeah. It's, it's from this other stuff. Just like yeah. when you talk about the universe. Okay, if you say there's no God, then how come this earth? This, who created all these things you have and all these the natural dog, things? Who the created bat. the dogs? The, like all the animals you can see, the plants, oxygen. Like how does it happen? Nothing just fall from the sky. Nope. It not, doesn't happen like that. There's an ultimate power, and there's a God. I believe in the miracles, and I believe His explanation is totally true. And Him bringing out scriptures from the Quran, I really do respect that. I mm -hmm. really do respect that. Each part of it was really amazing. Comment down below, guys, your first time hearing and watching this video. How was your reaction? Give us a thumbs up. Share this video as many as can subscribe to the channel, guys. Know how it is. We'll see you guys in the next video. Make sure you stay safe. I just bought a bag, like an old lady I'm back, wood smoking, I don't own papers Pass that 808, that don't, don't shake her Oh, bitch, you know I'm grinding like a pro skater Baby, mama bugging, I'm so quick to hit ignore Buku bitches in my bed, I got scales all